All right, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can upload a file to Amazon S3 using Laravel Vapor. The purpose of this video is to show you how you can do it from your local host when you haven't deployed a project to Vapor yet. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is create an S3 bucket. So I'm not gonna walk you through creating the bucket itself. It's really simple. Let's go to S3, create new bucket, default settings, block all public access, whatever region you want, name it, whatever you want, that doesn't matter. The important part here is that when Vapor goes to deploy your project for you, so in a staging or production environment, it's gonna configure all this stuff for you and you don't have to worry about it. However, in a local environment, when you are creating the bucket yourself, you need to make sure that you set the cores configuration policy. So what I ran into is that you need to tell uh, the S3 bucket this, to let your local host make requests directly to S3. So as an example here, I have, uh, I'm allowing any origin or any host to contact S3, specifically this bucket, and they can make any put or get requests and they can pass any header, okay? So without this set, your requests S3 are gonna fail. So everything else in terms of settings on S3, you can just leave the same. Everything can just be default. You just need to set that course configuration. All right, so next up, let's just walk through the React component. So I have a component here called Create Media, which is what we see on the left. And the important parts to note are this chunk here with the file input ref, where we just create a new ref. And then we have a bunch of state in terms of the file path, the media type, the file name of the file we're uploading. And then the other important one is on change file. And I'll get to that in a second. And then the last part is the actual HTML where we just have a, you know, a ternary if statement here saying, if we're uploading, then just render three animated dots. Otherwise render a paragraph tag with our file name and an input of type file with our on change file method set and our ref set. So what this looks like now, if I select a file on the left, say, I'm just gonna select this audio file. You can see in our network requ request, the first thing that happened was uh, we made a request to Vapor signed, URL, signed storage URL. So what's happening in the back end and why, Ver why Laravel Vapor you know, is awesome and takes care of so much for you and you should use it and it saves time is because what happened is I called on change file, which looks like this. I grabbed the file from our ref. In my case, I'm supporting only single files. So I just grabbed the first file. I set my state to uploading, which you know, rendered the three dots. And then I called vapor.store and I passed in the file. Then vapor did this. It made a request to my server, specifically to its own endpoint called sign storage URL. It talked to S3 and got a signed URL that we can use. It returned that signed URL. We can see that here. And then it made the request directly to S3 using that signed URL and gave it our file. So Vapor uploaded our file directly into S3 bucket for us. And then when all that was done, we uh, the promise was filled and we got our then method called. And in here, all we do is set state to response.key, which looks like this. Where is it? I was already on it. Response.key, which is basically just the file path of where Vapor put that file and the file name, which is a UUID that Vapor generated. And then file.name, uh, which I set because that comes from the file that the user uploaded. All right, so we set that state and that allows us to show the user what file they uploaded. And then from there we can click upload media, which is then just a traditional Laravel post request to save some data in a database. So I upload that, saves it and we have a new file. Now on the back end, when I go to create a controller, uh, sorry, when I go to upload a piece, uh, a new file, there's one thing that we did. And that is we took the path that Vapor generated, which was temp slash the UUID, and we moved that file. Specifically, we copied it from that temp path into just a normal path that has no temp directory. And the reason that we do that is because when we actually deploy this to Vapor in a staging or production environment, Vapor cleans out that temp directory. It's either cleans it out every 24 hours or cleans files that are older than 24 hours. 
But either way, it cleans out that temp directory on a regular basis. So we can't just leave our files there. We have to move them somewhere permanent. <clears throat> so when we go to create the, the media, we validate the request. If it's all valid, we move our file to the permanent location. We create the uh, record in the database, and that's it. We're done. So that's all you need to do to upload a file with Vapor. It's really simple. And if you're, you know, if you're not using a staging or production environment right away, you just need to make that bucket, set the course configuration policy, and then you're good to go. The one thing that I did run into and I want to touch on is that in the documentation, the second parameter was used for like a progress um, monitoring function or thing. I don't need to do that, so I just wanted to leave it out. So I initially tried this. However, if we actually run this, you'll see that we get an error about the bucket not being, uh, cannot read the property bucket of null. So this second parameter, I think it's technically a bug with the front end vapor code. Uh, it just needs to be a, an empty object. Really simple fix. Everything else worked great. I highly recommend, again, using vapor, upload your files as three, save on storage costs, makes everything a lot easier. All right, and that's the video. Hope you liked it. Please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you next time.